Hi there, welcome to the video where we'll be creating a gradient avatar here inside of CSS. So the way that we'll be doing this is we'll be getting a particular name such as Paul Halliday, and then we'll be taking that name and we'll be transferring that into the initials or in the circumstance where there is no last name, we'll simply just be using the first name. We can also look at when we hover on a particular avatar, we get this hover state and we'll be building this out entirely with CSS and JavaScript. So here we have a brand new web application that has an index.html. It also has a JavaScript folder with app.js, a CSS folder with index.css, and an animate.css. So animate.css is what we're gonna use for the animations, and this is this library here. We can find it by Daniel Eden over at his website. And then for both index and app, they are blank files. So let's start off with some names inside of app.js. So we have four names, three of which have both a first and a last name, and one in the middle here only has one name. So we'll have to take this into account when we come to splitting the string itself. And we'll start off by literally splitting the string. So let's make a split string, which takes a name and it returns a name dot split based on a space. And now anytime we console.log the names, such as names zero, and then we give that the split string we should be able to see two strings, one of Paul and one of Halliday. Next up, we have to map over these items to get the initials. So let's make another function called get initials. This time it will take a name once again, and we'll say name.map because we want to map over the name and return the first character. Now, if we get the initials over that split string, and we log that out, we should be able to see P and H. And that's because firstly, we have this name zero, and that corresponds to Paul Halliday. Then we have a split string, which returns that Paul and Halliday. And then we're calling get initials on top of that. And that will of course map that over to the first character. Next up, we want to format the name. So let's make a const format name, which takes in that name array, and providing that the name array is greater than one. So this is the circumstance where we have two names. We want to use string interpolation for name array zero, and then name array one. And I've got a video on string interpolation if you haven't seen that already. Otherwise, we want to simply display the name array zero. So that will give us are in the circumstance of Ragnaros, and for Paul Halliday, we'll have a P and a H. Now, if we have a format name over the get initials and the splitted string, we should be able to see that we have P, H. It's exactly what we want. We can now make a set avatar name, and that will take in a name and simply call these functions. So we'll compose it like so. Now we should be able to see set avatar name and we'll give it the names of one and when we look at that we should see is all we have to do at this point is to replace the split string with the name and when we do that we'll see is in the console so now we have the ability to get that particular initial at this stage we now need to of course display this on screen so let's do a names.map and that will map over each item inside of that names array. We'll get back a name. And then inside of this, we can define a wrapper. So we'll say document.get, or rather document.create element. And we'll create the element of div. We'll then set the attribute, which will be the class, and we'll give that a class of avatar. We'll create the avatar class in a moment. We'll then create a title element using create element h2. 
we'll say const title text and that will be document.create text node. The text node will be the set avatar name based on that name. And then we'll use the title element dot append child. We'll append that title text. And then we'll say title element dot set attribute. We'll set attribute equal to a class of avatar name, like so. And finally, we'll append the child of the wrapper and that will be that title element and then we can say document body append child will append that wrapper so that will now give us a div with each individual avatar like we can see here on the screen so already we're quite close to being finished but at this point we now need some css so we have the ability to see the avatar now we can head over to index.css and from within here, we can add our avatar class. So let's add an avatar. We can give that the width of 50 pixels, the height of 50 pixels, the color of white by default, the border radius of 50%. We'll give this for now the text align of center and we'll give it the background of red. Let's see what happens when we do that. We now have this red avatar we could do with adding some padding to the top of that. So let's add an avatar and then we'll say the H2 element. We want to add the padding top of 10 pixels or alternatively at this stage, we could also use our avatar name because we do give it that property inside of app.js. So let's add the avatar name. And so we want padding top of 10 pixels. That gives us the ability to have that avatar in the middle of the circle. We can also at this stage have an avatar hover and on the hover we can give it a box shadow of 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 10 pixels and then we'll use a 0 0.6 opacity black. So when we hover over this element now we should be able to see that we have this box shadow. We will need to add a transition of 1 second and we can give it a cubic bezier at that point to sort of change the way the animation works. So now if we hover over, you can see it's not just instantly appearing, it's taken one second to appear. You can of course shorten that down if you want to, it's entirely up to you, you can use a different color box shadow, simply showing that uh, we can have this hover element right now. That's also on our avatar name, let's give this a font family, and I'll be changing that to the Apple system font by default, otherwise we'll give it some different uh, sort of fallbacks here. Finally, to make this a little more interesting, there's a couple of ways in which we can generate a random gradient for this. So I'm simply going to copy and paste this into my index.css. So these are just varying different gradient classes. So we have a gradient violet, green, pink, and of course purple, teal, and red and yellow. So at this stage, we now need to get a random gradient and set that as the background. So let's go over to app.js. We'll make a new constant. We can make it above everything else. And we'll say const gradient class list. We'll give it the red yellow, the purple teal, the pink, and the green. We can then say const get random gradient. We can say the gradient class list. And we'll pick an item from here based on math dot floor and we'll say math dot random based on the gradient class list dot length and that should allow us to select a random element from that class list and now we can scroll down to where we add this to the DOM so the attribute rather on this class and we can add the avatar we can also add the gradient and then we'll use these back ticks now to use string interpolation on this. And we'll say get random gradient. Now when we save the file and we have a look, we can see that we have a random gradient. And we can either keep refreshing like so. And we'll see that, for example, on the green one, 
we have this black text color. So that's why we may want to use different classes because certain gradients may have different colors. Finally, all we want to do at this stage now is to add an animated class. So let's, on the wrapper itself, add an animated fade in left, and that comes from, of course, the animate.css. We save the file and we can see the animate in here on the side. So when we refresh, our avatar comes in like that. So that's how we can create these gradient avatars inside of CSS. We have the ability to use both names, such as Paul and Halliday, or alternatively, just one name in the case of Ragnaros. So thanks a lot. I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments what you think. And of course, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated.